Everybody, Russ on the Western Network. Hope you are all safe and well. If you're new around here, give it a like, give it a comment, give it a share, give it a subscribe. Bit of a different, uh, bit of a different thing there. Different sting, different, uh, different introduction. Because we're sort of, you know, Anton said it yesterday when he did his Connor Coventry piece, which I thought was really, really good. We are getting a bit bored. I mean, we're still going to be giving, you know, Hammers headlines five o'clock tonight. We've got three doozies of of rumours, but I thought we'll intermittently put it in with just just more of opinion pieces. You know, why we should sign um, Bissouma? You know, in terms of a piece Anton did earlier this week about Connor Coventry, and also there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of sort of free transfers and a lot of targets in certain genres. So you know, this is going to be a series going forward. So sort of top five. So five players. Today's five players for free that West Ham should sign. And obviously, it's just my opinion. It's just my opinion. And obviously, it coincides with the news that obviously yesterday it was announced that Jesse Lingard is leaving Man United. <gasps> Shock horror. Shock horror. And um, and Paul Pogba as well. Uh, and also, happy uh, for those of us in the UK. Hope you're having a lovely bank holiday. For those of you in, not in the UK, those in the UK have Thursday, Friday off, today and tomorrow off for the Queen's Diamond, uh, no, Platinum Jubilee. So there we go. Hope you're enjoying yourself. So that's what we're going to do. Bring together. And it's just my opinion, my five. I'd love to know your five in the comments below. So that's the idea. So we've got five, four, three, five, four, three, two, one. Doo, doo, doo. And I did a lovely little silhouette thumbnail. So I hope you appreciate that. Um, so f this is just my opinion. So these are five. And, you know, there's lots of free transfers this summer. Um, lots. People come to their own um, sort of end of their contracts. It's, it's a bit like the way the American system works. It seems where players don't tend to get traded as much now. It tends they, they wind their contract down and then sign a new contract with another club. Um, and that's sort of what's happened this year. There's a lot of players like the bat, like the obviously Mbappe. He was running his contract down, but then signed you know ten million pound a week, whatever it is. Um, stuff like Paul Pogba, Dybala, um, Spurs have signed Ivan Perisic, the 33 year old. There we go. That's one for the future. Um, <laughs> It'd probably be brilliant now. Uh, Christian Eriksen and people like that. I mean, obviously, they're not going to be featured in this in this list. So I'm going to give you my thoughts and uh, give you my suggestions on suggestions, but who people I would like, my sort of wish list, and uh, let me know yours as well. And I've got a little bit of information. And some of these aren't going to be much of a surprise, to be honest, but I've collated them into this sort of show. So we'll do, you know, five players from the championship, five players from the relegated sides, all these types of things, just to just to sort of decompart, decompartmentalize. That's a long word for Thursday. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to start off, and I should have probably gone five, four, three, two, one. I should have, should have gone the other way, but I'm starting with number one. So my number one free transfer I'd love West Ham to sign this summer is this man, Andre Belotti. Goes without saying, really. Um, we're in desperate need of a striker, as you know. And this man is, I think, for a free transfer, an absolute bloody bargain. I'll be honest. He's an absolute bloody bargain. In terms of his stats, let me take off. No disrespect to the Italian flag. There we go. In terms of his stats, you know, he's, he's 28 years old. So he's just coming to sort of maybe the end of his peak. In all honesty, um, but he's he's one point eight one meters, which is a lot taller than me. But then so is a lot of people, to be honest. Uh, centre forward, uh, his clubs include uh, his current club is Torino, uh, Palmeiro, um, UC Albino Lefe, and Albino Lefe Primavera. There we go. His lifetime stats. Look at those things: three hundred and ninety appearances, one hundred and fifty-eight goals, thirty-eight assists. So that's a hundred. It's almost two hundred goal opportunity or goal scoring opportunities. Isn't that isn't that the way to explain it? In three hundred ninety, so one in two, pretty much. Uh, in the Serie A, his two hundred and seventy appearances, one hundred and six goals, twenty-seven appearances, and internationally as well, forty-two appearances, twelve goals, and twelve assists. In terms of his sort of his um, trophy cabinet, um, the Euros this year, 
He was part of the European Championships. And i um, not even going to pronounce that, but in 2014, he won that. But I think he, I think Bellotti is gonna is is someone who would really not only fill that void in terms of we need that striker, but also he's got that sort of. And I've said it before, sort of past the personalities, a nasty, you know, relentless in his pursuit of defenders. And I think you know, he's similar to a bit of Arnautovic. We liked Arnautovic when he was playing for us because he would he was a horrible player to play against. But he, you loved him when he played for you, and and I think that's what would happen with Belotti. I think he'd be really good, and he'd make a massive impact. And he's got the experience as well. And I think that's something we we missed out, you know. And also he's got the experience of playing in a different league as well. So when we are playing in Europe, he knows how the Italians play, and so you know as well as internationally. But he knows that. So you know you've got that extra bit of information there, which I don't think. I mean, a Bonner played for Juventus and, and whatnot, but you know. He, wasn't actually in the squad when we played, you know, European games because he got injured, from, obviously, from November onwards. So in sort of the, the latter stages. And that's something I think we really miss out. This guy's experienced. And, you know, 28, um, I think he's he's got a few years ahead of him. But he's well experienced as well. And I think Moyes will really appreciate that. So that's my number one target. My number two target is this guy, Dan Axel Zagadou. As we know, we've already got the song. Zagadoo doo doo, push pineapples, grind coffee. No, shake the palm trees, whatever it is, and then it's grind coffee. Um, but we're in the need of a defender. Obviously, the the, the talk is that uh, Agrid is is on his way. Nayef is on his way. Um, whether it's anywhere between fifteen and thirty million, based on who you talk to and the add-ons and whatnot. But that's a void. That's something we really need. That left-sided. But Zagadoo. He could be our, he could be a, not a diamond in the rough because he's been playing for Dortmund for a few years now, but he's a bloody good player. If we look at his stats, you can see he's 22. He's French as well, so you've got that French connection. Not just not just his clothing brand, um, but he's left sided as well. One point, so he's almost two meters tall. Uh, he's a centre back. He's played for Dortmund and he's played for Paris Saint Germain. Uh, in, in uh, not first team, but in the B team in the under 19s, he's made 108 appearances. He's, he doesn't. He scored four goals, one assist in the Bundesliga. 67 appearances, four goals, one assist. And internationally, he's played every age group apart from make a full international debut. But I think he's got his energy. He's he's quick. He's got a real physical presence with him. Now that's you know. When I've seen Neuf play, for example, agree play. He's he's a fantastic player. He's a fantastic ball player. But he doesn't have that sort of. He's not. You know, he's he's strong, but he's not stocky. And I think you know, and but Zuma's quite stocky. And I think this guy as well. He's he's quite built. You look at him. I think I've got a picture of him. I had a picture of him against this <laughs> against a, a forward. He's about three foot taller than him. He's absolutely ginormous. He's a ginormous character. And I think for a free transfer, he'd be an absolute bargain. Um, in terms of his accolades uh he's won the sort of german super cup uh in 2020 and uh he won the german cup in 2021 so he's you know he's won silverware but i think there's a real there's a real thing with him i, I think there's there could be for me zagadu is a could be a very useful a very useful free transfer uh and other clubs are sniffing around for him um and i think west ham would not go too far wrong to get him in board on board to be honest next third Striker, Devuk or Divuk Origi, Divuk not. I almost said Derek Origi. Derek Origi, pleased to meet you. No, Divuk Origi, uh, and I've pronounced that wrong. I know I have in the comments. It's pronounced Derek. Okay, that I know. I'm not very good at pronouncing words, as you can tell. But I mean, we're looking for a Premier League ready striker. This guy's it. This guy is it. Talks him going to you know AC Milan could be possible, but you know in terms of the Moyes MOT test, he ticks a lot of boxes. Looking at his stats, 27, so, you know, and he's in his prime, one, one, he's 1 metre 85, centre forward, he's played for Liverpool, Wolfsburg and Lille. His lifetime um, sort of appearances, is 302 appearances, 65 goals, 27 uh, um, assists, so that's six, uh, seven, eight, 82. 82 goal scoring opportunities in 300 games. Premier League, uh, 107 appearances, 22 goals, 10 assists. A lot of them will be off the bench as well. He's been playing as a bit 
sort of a, a, not a bit player, but sort of a second string um, forward, which is uh, well beyond, beyond beyond his capabilities, well below his capabilities rather. <clears throat> and he's made thirty two appearances in um, in European uh, in, internationals for Belgium. Scoring three goals and two assists. Obviously, you know, Liverpool, they've done very well. So he's done very well as well. Has been part of the squads, Premier League. He's won the Champions League, FA Cup, League Cup, the Super Cup and uh, the Club World Cup as well. So in terms of a in terms of a winner, in terms of a winner, in terms of someone who um, who's won stuff, who's got experience, this guy, this guy has got all of it, albeit maybe from more of a sort of a substitute, a squad perspective rather than a starting perspective. But if this guy and his attitude as well, I mean, you, you never see him quibble about game time or anything like that. I think that's something which Moyes will really appreciate uh, in, in Origi. If we could get him, it'd be fantastic. So he's my number three. So, you know, that's two strikers so far. So I'm trying to save Moyes some money. Um, next, we're going to, we've had, we've had two strikers. We've had a defender. Now I'm going to the midfield. This guy. Taliso, Taliso from Bay, currently on the books at Bayern Munich. Um, as a midfielder, I think he there's not much, there's not many better than him to be honest. Um, looking at his stats, he's 27, uh, 1.1 meter, um, central midfield, French international. He plays for Bayern Munich. He's played for Lyon as well. Um, 278 appearances, 50 goals. Um, and 32 assists for a midfielder. Um, I think that's not too shabby at all. 278 appearances in was it 50, uh, 82 goal scoring opportunities. Bundesliga, 72 appearances, 11 goals and 7 assists. And internationally, 28 caps for France um, with 5 goals and assists combined. But what I like about Tadiso is, again, very similar to Divock Origi, he's, he's won a lot. Um, Look what he's won in his time. Um, he's won the Bundesliga five times. He's won the German Super Cup four times. He's won the German Cup twice. He's won the Champions League. He's won the Super Cup. He's won the the Club World Cup most recently. He's won the the World Cup itself, the actual World Cup for France with France in 2018. So you're looking for a born winner. If you're looking for someone who's knows what it is to win a game, this guy is. This guy could be it. He generally could be it. Um, I think for me, he's a really good free transfer for us. He may cost a lot in wages because he comes with a pedigree. But 27, um, I definitely think he could be a good one. And last but no means least, another op another sort of midfield option. I mean, Tilliso is more of an attacking midfielder, I'd say, or box-to-box or -box midfielder. But if you want, say, a defensive midfielder who maybe a partner Declan Rice, for example, or, you know, one that could do a job in European games with Suchek or a, or a Fornals, you know, as, as, as an option with number two, you know, in terms of a second string, um, Talisa would probably want demand first team football and be a first teamer. But this guy, I think, could do the job. Uh, Florin Grilichk. Now, I've pronounced that terribly wrong. I know I have, but um, another potential free transfer, maybe as more of a squad player, but with quality, he comes with a great pedigree. In terms of his stats, um, he's 26 years old, 1.87 metres. Uh, he's a defensive central midfielder, whereas Taliso is more of a sort of box to box. He's played for Hoffenheim and, and Werder Bremen. So he comes with, you know, a lot of a lot of pedigrees, 257 appearances, 32 goals, 31 assists. Not too bad for a defensive midfielder. Um, so that's six, 63 goal scoring opportunities in 200 foot. So it's what, one in four roughly, just over, just under one in, over one in four. Bundesliga, 178 games, six goals, 14 assists. So obviously his, um, his goal scoring attributes were mainly when he wasn't playing in the Bundesliga, when he's probably playing for uh, St. Bolton under 18s um, or Werder Bremen 2, Werder Bremen under 19s. Internationally, 31 appearances for Austria. Um, one goal and two assists, but he's a very dynamic. He likes to get stuck in, and I think he could be a player which would be one of those players which, on paper, you not you don't get excited about when he signs, but somebody becomes integral to the team. Someone when he's not playing, sort of the the, the you know not to not to be nasty but sort of the Hayden Mullins player do you know what I mean the the sort of the water carrier that the guy who's when he's not playing it's just not ticking and you don't know why he's sort of the glue 
he's the glue which will stick the team together and he's someone i think that if a Suchek gets injured or suspended or you know or, or Declan gets a knock and we need to or maybe we're winning a game 2-1 or 1-0 and we need to get someone on just to show it a bit like what we did with Nobes a bit like Nobes came on but this guy would come on and just sit just sit on the behind the in front of the back four and just defend and um and I think he'd be really useful so that's so that's what I'm so let me just go through my top five again just so you know so number one I had for Bellotti number two I had Dan Axel Zagadoo pushed by Naples grind coffee number three Divok Origi uh, number four Kali Carito Cariton I to call him Teliso Teliso is a lot easier and number five is Florian won't even bother pronouncing his surname but what do you think let me know in the comments below who would you sign who would you who would your top five free transfers be let me know in the comments below if you're new around here as i say give it a like give it a comment give it a share give it a bloody good subscribe if you enjoyed our little show yesterday our uh keep loan or sell um in terms of going through each member of the squad we're starting with the defenders and goalkeepers to, uh, last night and then we're doing also midfielders forwards and we may do that maybe on the 23s as a collective separately maybe as well might be quite interesting um but uh, let me know what you thought of that as well if you haven't got, got to see it go and see it now and let me know what you think of this concept as well this little top five as well if you quite like it um we'll carry on doing it. we've got a whole lot you know whole raft lined up so um take care everyone stay safe wash those hands stay like you say cheeky and stay positive hope you have a lovely rest of the bank holiday don't forget hammers headlines at five o'clock tonight and uh ta-ta for now my friends cheerio It's like a family tree, part of you.